everyone and welcome to my new doll transformation. I keep working on my Zodiac dolls collection and now in the end of May it's time for Gemini. I know from your comments many of you were really excited about this doll, about the concept of like double repaint, double personality and I was also thinking you know for a while what I would do, what it's supposed to be and many of you were of course suggested that I would make a doll with two heads or something like this but I feel like constructing something today and that's why we're going to make a doll with two faces. This is the first time I'm trying to do something like this, so I have no idea if I'm going to succeed in the end of this video, but let's try at least. Like I told it already, I really feel very creative and feel like constructing and building things up today. So what I was planning to do, I have here some Draculaurus hat. I have it already for a long time in my stock. I don't really know what's happened to her body. Maybe it was donated to some other project. I'm not sure exactly. I'm actually going to make something similar to Blythe dolls or to BGD dolls, you know, when they have removable face plates. Like they have one body, one general head, but different face plates. And this is what I'm going to do today. But when I got all this Draculaura dolls out of my stock, I've suddenly realized that they are all different. Like look for example, these two Draculaura faces look completely different. This face is clearly smaller, skinnier and if I for example cut this part of this face and try to put it on this head, it would never fit. I put the hair lines together and this nose is clearly like this part is shorter than this part. So this doll already cannot go together with this hat. Then another couple of faces and they are also not exactly the same. This face is a little bit smaller but it's also more round at the same time. So after I've checked all these Draculaura dolls, I've realized that all of them are slightly different but they are also all different edition dolls. So then I realized I have to look for exactly the same dolls, like really the same edition, the same outfits coming actually just from different boxes of the same series. So these Draculauras are going back to stock and here I have prepared a bunch of Frankies <laughs> and a bunch of Laguna Blue dolls. Let's see if we can find any matches here. Like look for example, these two Laguna Blue dolls, they have exactly the same outfits, but their faces are still not the same. <laughs> Let's take a look at this little bit darker blue Lagunas. Maybe they're the same. And you know what probably they are? The noses, the lips, the chins, yes, I think these three Laguna Blue dolls are the same. So let's keep them aside. And what do we have here in this Frankie kingdom? These two are not, this one is not. You know what, I'm probably still more sure about these two Laguna Blue dolls because they're definitely the same, I have no doubt about their identity and these two Frankenstein dolls are probably the same but I don't really want to test it on practice you know first cut a doll in pieces and then figure out no this doll doesn't fit give me back my Lagunas so these two dolls are staying with me these three are going back to stock and we can actually start the transformation First of all, I'm going to remove their outfits and all these accessories and by the way, I really like her outfit, it looks really cute. And after this, I'm going to cut their hair as short as I can. Thank you. 
Using hot air of my hair dryer, I'm going to make this doll's head soft and like this I will also melt the glue inside of the heads. And then I'm going to take my tweezers and remove the rest of the hair from the inside of the heads. And you can see that from this head I've removed the hair completely because this one I'm going to use as the main head and here I've cleaned up just a little bit here the hairline because from this head I'm going to use just the face like the front part. But now it's time to take my acetone and remove their original faces. So I think I'm ready to start working on these face plates and I will need of course a very sharp knife and also some pen and I think I will take one of these fine liners from the brand Arteza. Oops. <laughs> so if you watched my doll repaint video a week ago, you know already that I've got a huge box full of brand new art supplies from this brand from Arteza and I'm testing them already for two weeks. The first experiment a week ago was very successful. You can go check that video if you haven't seen it yet because these art supplies, they have a really very decent quality and they're also very affordable. So today we will continue using them and let's grab, doesn't matter, any dark liner. And now it's probably the most difficult moment of the complete transformation because I have to copy this pattern on the second hat. Ooh, ready to cut? <laughs> Ta-da! And this is, by the way, how the rooted doll head looks from the inside. So this part I don't need anymore. This is our face number one. And let's move on to the face number two. And this is how empty head looks from the inside, here is still a piece forgotten. And now is the moment of truth, now we will know if this first face plate would fit the head. Yeah, there are some tiny adjustments needed, I think, here around the ears, but I think we can work with it. So we now we need to create some system that would keep the face plates 
on their place and that would let us to exchange these faces freely, any moment, whatever we want. And my first idea, my first intention was to use my epoxy sculpt and to fill this head in and to you know, make some locking construction. But what is the problem with the epoxy sculpt, guys? It's extremely heavy. Look, these two tiny jars of epoxy, it's half of a kilo. It's, yeah, it's 227 grams per box. So I don't really think it's a very good idea to use such a heavy material for a doll head and especially this time we'll need quite a lot of this epoxy sculpt because otherwise the doll's head would become too heavy and then our doll would fall all the time or you know lean to the side all the time it's not ideal we must find something extremely light and actually the lightest clay I could find on the market is this silk clay it weighs just nothing really this whole tube is just I don't know 50 gram or something like this it's much lighter than these two jars of epoxy scalp so let's take this silk clay and let's fill this head in So you see this is what I've made and now I'm going to take these tiny magnets going to take every time two of them and I'm going to push them into this clay completely the both of them And I let it dry for 24 hours. The next day I can remove the protection and then we'll finally see what we made. And it looks really good to me. And the second face plate fits it also really good. So now I'm going to glue these magnets to the face plates to create some sort of locks. And I also want to fill in these holes in her legs using the epoxy skull. The next day, when everything gets completely dry, I'm going to take my very sharp knife and I'm going to remove all these fins from her hands.
The next step is sanding her body using some regular nail buffers because I need to remove this glossy top from the surface of the body. And then I'm going to cover the body and both of the faces with a couple of layers of some very neutral light acrylic paint. While the paint is drying, I'm going to sketch her outfits. You know, I don't really do it every time for my dolls, but this time when we are working on a, such a double concept doll, I would like to plan it first on paper. And for this I will need my new art supplies from Arteza. I will need, of course, one of these media pads, some sketchbook, I will need watercolors, I will need the fine liners, and I will need acrylics, of course, and probably the pencils as well. Today I've decided to work with the Japanese Lolita fashion style, and you know, honestly, I'm absolutely not a professional in Japanese street style fashion, but I absolutely adore the way it looks. So I've decided to create something Japanese style, but still made by me. So if you are a true Lolita, fan if you're really professional in it please don't judge me too hard but today i've decided to take as an opposite two different lolita styles one doll one face plate and one look will be a sweet lolita or maybe a classic lolita but you know some more pinkish and more sweet delicate looking one and another one i've decided to make a gothic dark lolita so and this is exactly what we are going to sketch right now the first dress is going to be very pink very flare and very girlish i don't know we'll make probably short sleeves maybe some white collar some lace the bows everywhere the flowers decoration things like this I'm going to use two kinds of pink acrylics and also white and red acrylics for the details. And here I have selected a bunch of fine liners also in similar colors. Yeah, both the acrylics and the liners perform really good as you can see. And I've also read in the comments under my previous video where I was unboxing all the treasures that many of you have said you also like the supplies from Arteza and mostly you were excited about the same set of acrylics, I think. So yes, I agree. They work really like they're supposed to and the set of 60 colors is 100% affordable and it's much cheaper than the concrete on the market. The second dress is going to be black, so I will use this black watercolor paint instead of the acrylics because it's more transparent and like this I can layer the colors and show the details better.
Okay, now I'm going to send these sketches to my mom because she's responsible for the outfit today and I can finally start working on the faces. All these layers of the acrylic paint got already dry, I've already sprayed the face with three layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant, but first of all, let's take a look at our construction, how it works, how it looks. And it works perfectly, it seems. Check it out, guys. Here we have one face on. Then I can easily take it off. The magnets work perfectly. And I can attach another one. Honestly, it works even better than I expected. Oh, I'm so happy, guys. Now let's finally draw the faces. In my doll repaint video last week Friday, I've tried these brand new watercolor pencils from Arteza and they performed really good on the big Rapunzel doll. But I still have a question, would they work as good on a regular Monster High doll? And this is exactly what we are going to test today. And since I'm planning to make two different faces today, we will have plenty of opportunities to test these pencils properly. So I want to start with the pink Lolita makeup. Here I have selected a bunch of pencils for it. You can see I'm going to use mostly natural and pink colors for her face. And now let's make these pencils very sharp to be able to draw on tiny doll faces. Here I have also prepared some soft pastels in very similar colors. First of all I sketch the eyes and the eyebrows and then I will add light shadows to her face. I don't really want to do too much contouring today, contouring in our understanding is not that much popular in Japan and in Lolita makeup, but I still have to draw some natural shadows. Then I add pink pastels to the eyelids and the biggest accent I'm making on the outer corners of the eyes. The blush I'm going to apply quite high because this is what I see on many pictures online. The Lolita models are making pink the highest points of their cheeks. The lips I want to keep very natural, just a touch of pink pastels to the middle of them. And now let's draw the white of her eyes, the eyelids, the irises and the eyebrows, of course. I've protected this layer with Mr. Super Clear sealant and now I'm going to repeat it again just to reach the better coverage of all the pencils. You can see that the blue and the brown pencils go really good on. 
but the white has a little bit less coverage than my regular pencils, I think. Let's compare them. I will color her right eye using my favorite white pencil, the Carandash Super Color Soft. Yes, you see it gives a thicker coverage than Arteza, but of course the Carandash pencils are approximately 10 times more expensive than Arteza as well. But are they 10 times better? Yeah, it's a question. After this I'm applying shadows and highlights to make the face more realistic. And on the next layer I add tiny details with the black pencil. I draw the bottom eyelashes, the eyeliner, I outline the irises, all the things like this. Now I'm going to take my brand new white acrylic paint from Arteza and add reflections to her eyes. And I've noticed also that in Lolita makeup and in Japanese makeup in general, they use quite often very bright highlighter really here on the middle of the bottom eyelid, in the corners and in the middle, not just in the corners. So I think it looks very cute, let's do it as well. So here is our face number one and now let's work on the face number two. Let's swap the face plates. The second makeup will be darker of course, so here is the new selection of pencils and pastels and all the colors are much deeper, you can see it. So, and now I repeat it all again from zero, but with a different color set. First of all, I'm sketching the eyes and eyebrows, and let's give her maybe very big cartoonish eyes and some different face expression, eyes expression, just to make these two faces completely different. The skin tone will be pretty similar on both of the faces because they still should match the same body, but the eye makeup is going to be much darker this time.
Okay, now both of her faces are finished, I think, and I still want to blush her body slightly to match the face tone. So now the doll has two faces, two different outfits, and I want to make for her also two different wigs. I'm going to make yarn wigs today, and that's why I went to our local store and bought two kinds of acrylic yarn, the black and the white one. And for this you need to cut this yarn into pieces of 30-40 cm. Then I fold the pieces of yarn in two and I fix them on a wooden stick one by one. Now I take such a brush for cats and I brush the yarn making it look like some fluffy hair. As a result I've got lots of fluffy fiber, but don't worry, it's not a waste, it will become a stuffing later for my stuffed toys in the future. But actually we could take shorter pieces of yarn, I think something like 20-25 cm would be enough already. And to complete the transformation from yarn into hair, I'm going to make it flat with a hair straightener. Now I can cut off the strands of hair from the stick, put them onto some plastic surface and then I apply tacky glue making wafts like this. the glue dry completely, then I trim the glued edges to make them more neat and the wefts are ready. You see I've made a mountain of them in both colors and now I can make the wigs. And let's start probably with the black one. The head I've protected with two layers of plastic wrap and with a tape. And now using my glue gun I'm going to attach the wefts to the head making a wig and at the same time creating a wig cap. This type of hair is very soft and it's very easy to style, so I think I want to give her a shorter hairstyle today because I don't really do it that much often with regular thicker hair. And here it is, it looks extremely cute I think, and now let's repeat it all again using white hair. <sighs> it's gonna be again a video of 40 minutes probably. And now I want to color her hair, you know, to add some colorful strands, something like this. And I have an idea that seems absolutely brilliant to me right now, but honestly I have no idea if it's going to work, but we will figure it out very soon. And the idea is to use these fabric markers from Arteza that you have seen also in my previous video last week Friday, to color this yarn hair, because basically this yarn is kind of fabric, the future fabric. 
and these markers are made to use them on fabric. So I really think these markers might work really good. Let's test it. And it looks really good. Now I will let the markers dry for 7 hours and then we are going to use the hair straightener again to apply high temperature to the markers to make them permanent. And it seems it really works. The markers on her hair don't stain my fingers anymore even if I make them wet. Very cool guys. So and this is what we've made today, here are the dresses made by my mom, do you still remember we've sketched these dresses in the beginning of this video? And she has also made a cute bag for this pink doll and the long socks. So now I'm going to put it all on the doll and then I'll take a look at the end result pictures. So and this is the result of our big transformation today. It took of course extremely a lot of time. I wasn't even sure till the very end if I would be able to finish this doll before Friday. Because everything was just new today. And making a Monster High doll with changeable faces. And making the yarn wigs. And even all my art supplies today were new. There were so many things I wasn't sure about today. That I'm really surprised everything went so smooth. And it all worked out even better than I expected. I will for sure continue experimenting with yarn weeks because I see a lot of future there, especially when we know now that we can dye it with the fabric markers. And by the way, all the art supplies have shown a great performance today as well. I would say it's a great option for creative art students and just for everyone who wants a nice quality for less money. All the links to the supplies and to the Arteza website will be in the description box under this video. And my code for 10% reduction on any Arteza supplies is also still working. So if you were thinking about trying something from their products, you can save some money using this code. And of course I want also to wish happy birthday to all Gemini people here. I hope you're satisfied with your very special doll. Please don't forget to tell me in the comments, by the way, what you think about all this, because I'm really looking forward to hear from you, to hear your reaction. So, and that was my transformation of the week, or I could even say probably it was a transformation of the year, because I've tried lots of new things today. So, I really hope, guys, you had fun today with me, and if so, please don't forget to support my art here on YouTube with your likes. Of course, subscribe to my channel, I post new dolly paint videos every week Friday, and I will see you ready very soon. Have fun! Love you guys! Bye!